By the end of this video, you will learn the basics of the free music notation software MuseScore. You will learn how to set up your score as well as add notes and rests. I will cover how you can select and edit things like time signatures, key signatures, and lyrics. You will learn how to format the score so that it looks the way you want it to look by being able to do things like resize the notes and stretch and shrink measures. And lastly, I will cover some hidden tricks that will help with your workflow in the scores that you're creating, especially shortcuts which will cut down the time it takes you to create the music in MuseScore. Let's get started. So the first thing you are going to want to do is download MuseScore and install it on your computer so you can use it. Uh, you can just go to Google and type in MuseScore download and then uh, click on the link for the MuseScore.org page. If you want an in-depth look on how to download uh, MuseScore and install it, I have another video. Also, if you have a specific question on how to use MuseScore, you can check out my other videos on my channel um, that you might be addressed there. So once you have it installed on your computer, you will open it up. And the first thing you will notice is it's gonna bring you to a start center. And the options that you have are going to be to create a new score, or if you have other scores that you created, you can click on those. You can also search the online community, and that's a great place, that search bar uh, is a great place to find music that you're looking for. Let's say you're looking for a piece by Beethoven or a popular piece that's uh, contemporary. You'll find uh, many uh, free sheet music there as well as uh, paid sheet music for uh, the pro version. So in order to get started, let's go ahead and just click on create a new score. So this will start with uh, formatting the score the way you would like it at the beginning, and all of these uh, items are gonna be able to be edited later. And so let's just call this uh, Muse Score. 3.6 uh, beginners tutorial. So that would be for the title of your piece. You can add a subtitle if you would like, uh, the composer for this one, and then uh, the other information you can fill out as well. And then you can press next. And then it brings you to a template. Now this is uh, for more commonly used uh, instruments. Now this is not a complete list. So what I usually do is I click on the general setting here and then it'll uh, give me the option to choose instruments. So I click on that and now press next. Um, if you choose one of the ones from this e previous screen, you will not see this instrument screen, but it's easy to get to later by just pressing I on your computer. So now you can choose your instruments one by one. And for this score, I'm going to create a piano part and let's add a glockenspiel to this. And then why not a vocal soprano voice? So it's kind of an interesting instrumentation, but now uh, you can see it, it puts the score in order. And now the new version of MuseScore, the version 3.6, uh, the ordering has been enhanced. So now you can select which ordering you would like this to be in, and it will put it in automatically. So right now it's on orchestral, and these are standard ways of ordering the uh, instruments that you have selected. So we've got that correct. I'm gonna click next. You can you choose your key signature. I'm just gonna keep uh, clicking next. And then of course you can see entering your time signature and as well as if you have a pickup measure and then uh, the amount, number of measures that you have as well as the tempo. And again, all of these can be changed later, which I'm going to show you how. So I'm gonna press finish. And now it has created at least a blank template of the score that I wanted to create. The first thing you're going to uh, want to be able to do is be able to select and deselect things as well as put in notes and rests. So before you start putting in notes and rests, uh, you will notice that you can uh, change the zoom level of the page. And if you go right here to the top left, you can uh, zoom into different um, you know, levels. And so I'm gonna do 150 for this so you can see uh, the notes nice and large. So to start with inputting notes, what you can do is this end right here is the note input mode. So if I, if I just click right now, uh, I can just select the different things on the score. But right here, I, if I click this, now I can actually add a note to the first measure. So in order to add a note, you can just hover over the measure that you want to add the note to. I'm going to add the piano part here. I'm just going to add a C. And then it will auto fill in the other rests that you have there. And so I can just continue to add these notes. And it will play typically play the note as you add them. And so if I want to change the uh, note value, I can just go up here to the uh, different uh, notes lengths that I have. And so maybe I'll go to an eighth note. And I will do that for the next measure. And so forth. Now, if uh, uh, one hint, if you'd like to change the length of a note, uh, you can have it selected. So let's say I, if I have that off, that means I can select different things. So let's say I wanna change the first note. Uh, I can select it and now I can just click one of these uh, notes so that you can change that. If you wanna undo anything, you just push Control Z. One thing that is helpful is a, a shortcut that will help you is to just have the note selected and press Q and that will shorten the note. 
And if I pre keep pressing Q, I can get it as short as I would like, and then W will increase the note. So that's one thing that would uh, help for input uh, notes. You can also add notes by uh, hooking up a MIDI keyboard and then playing the note uh, with the different note uh, durations selected. And then uh, they also have a keyboard in, to, in MuseScore. You can go up to View and then just press on Piano Keyboard. And then you can input notes this way. You have to make sure that note input mode is on. If I play the keyboard right now, nothing happens. So you got to press note input mode and then make sure that you have it selected where you want it selected. And then you can just start playing notes and it will add the duration that you have selected on the top. So those are a couple ways that you can add different notes to uh, the music that you're creating. And then for rests, it's very similar. Uh, you can do this with the note selector off and then just uh, press on the rest icon here. And then now when I click on something, let's say I click on that note and then I have it rest here, it will change that rest, it would change that note to the rest that I have selected on the note, the note input. So again, just uh, to show you, so if I do this and then I want, let's say a quarter rest, or sorry, an eighth rest, then I would do that and make sure I press the rest. And so now it's got the eighth rest there too. Um, there are shortcuts on your keyboard you can use. Um, and number five is for a quarter note and then four is for an eighth. And then so forth, you can use all of the the shortcuts on your uh, keyboard, so all the numbers as as you have some as you have a rest or a note selected. Either one will work. I can change this to a half note if I want, or I can change it to a chord note again. So this video barely scratches the surface to what is possible in MuseScore. For the most in depth resource for using MuseScore, you'll want to check out my complete MuseScore course that covers everything from A to Z that you would want to know on using this software. The link for the course is in the description below. It's currently hosted on Udemy, so many of you are already familiar with that platform. And if that changes in the future, it will reflect in the link. Now, next to the link in the description, there is a coupon code that you can use at checkout that will give you one of the best prices for a complete MuseScore course. Currently, the price is set at $12.99, but this could change uh, in the future based on Udemy's sales and promotions. So if you check out the link to the course, you'll notice that almost a thousand people have taken the course and have benefited from being able to save time by learning step-by-step -step what to do in MuseScore when creating your scores. The course is also the best place to ask me questions if you are having any problems with using MuseScore. And so um, again, that's the best place to uh, find me for uh, asking questions on how to use MuseScore. So let's get back to uh, the walkthrough. So now you know how to put in notes and rests. So one thing I wanted to point out is if you go up to edit and you click on preferences, You'll notice they have the general settings here, which you can change different things. Uh, one thing I like here is being able to change from light mode to dark mode. And so you have currently light mode. And then let's say I wanted to change to dark mode. It would look like that. And I'm going to change it back to light mode uh, for the rest of this tutorial. The uh, one thing I want to show you is this shortcuts key. And right here, it shows you all the different shortcuts for the different functions in MuseScore. And so this is very useful. And you can actually change shortcuts just by double clicking and then it will ask you for the new shortcut. So th that's one thing I wanted to point out. And then over here on the left-hand side, you'll notice are all the palettes. And this is where you find most of the, the things you want to edit in the score itself. So before we get to the palettes, I want to show you how to select and, and delete things. So in order to select a note, you just hover over the note head itself and then ju just left click. And so that will click the note head. And when you do that, you'll notice the inspector screen comes up on the right-hand side. If it doesn't do that, just go up to view and then click on inspector. You could also press F8 on your keyboard. And the nice thing about the inspector element is the very first option, visible and invisible. So if you ever want to hide something, you can just do that and it will keep the quarter note there, but it'll uh, hide the note head. And if you wanted to select the beam, you would just uh, click the beam right on it. And then same thing, you could hide that as well. To undo anything is control Z. Let's say you want to select an entire measure. You would just uh, click in the middle of the measure somewhere in like here, and that will select the entire measure. If you want to select a note to the right or the left, then you can just hold shift and then use the arrows on your keyboard and it will click on the next one. And so you can see you can have different selections there. In order to delete notes, you would have that selected and then you would just press delete on your keyboard and it would delete the notes. To delete an entire measure, you want to select the measure you would like to delete and then you will hit control delete and that will delete the entire measure. And uh, so again, to delete the entire measure is control delete. So those are a couple uh, helpful tools for just selecting and deselecting things. Now, if you look over to the left-hand side of the screen, you'll notice the palettes. And these are the ones that are most typically used. If you ever want to add any palettes, you can just click on Add Palettes, and it will give you several more that you can choose from. You can also click on this uh, icon here, and you can say Expand All Palettes. That will show you all the ones that are, um, uh, that are on your screen right now, or Collapse. 
And then another place to find everything is at the master palette. You just press view and then click on master palette. And now this will give you just about every type of symbol that you would need in your music. And so you can explore this part of the MuseScore software so you can find exactly what you're looking for. So some helpful things in the palettes though are the breaks and spacers, and this is for formatting. Let's say you would like to have the systems end at a certain measure. You can just bring this uh, system break over here and you just drag and then drop. And that's how the palettes work for the most part. You just take what you want to uh, use and then drag and drop it to where you would like to use it. You also have other options like the uh, staff spacer. And the one that I like to use is the staff spacer fixed. And so you just drag and then drop where you want it. And this will be where you can space the staff up or down. You can also add things like dynamics. And again, it's just click and then drag where you would like to use it. And that dynamic will then be associated with that note for playback, which the playback features are at the top of the screen. Now, one of the most helpful things about MuseScore is that you are able to change the key signature as well as transpose. So first you would want to try the key signature and to do this, you would just go over to key signatures and then you can just take the key signature and then drag and then drop it. And that will change the key signature for the entire piece. And to change it for a different measure, you would just uh, drag and drop to a different measure. Now you notice it did not change the notes though. So in order to transpose, you want to have the part of music you want to transpose selected and then go up to tools and then transpose. And then this will ask you what key you would like to transpose it to. And let's say I would like to transpose it up to G major. And then you can also uh, transpose uh, if you have other chord symbols, it will transpose those as well. So you can leave that clicked. I'm just going to press OK. And so now you notice it changed to G major for that instrument uh, for that uh, system. So you can see if I wanted both of these uh, transposed, then I would need to do uh, have them both selected, go up to tools, transpose, and then the same process would apply. If you would like to make the notes larger, you can make your selection. Let's say you wanted to make all of the notes. You just, uh, to select a larger amount, you just click on the measure and then hold shift and then uh, click on the next measure that you would, uh, the entire selection. So then you would go up to format, page settings, and then in the page settings, you can go to scaling. And so the staff space you can see is set at that. You can just press these uh, arrows up and down and I'm going to press o apply. And you can see um, that it was the, the notes were made larger. And so you can make them larger or smaller. If I were to go up there and then format page settings and then click on the arrows down, then I would make them smaller. And this would be helpful if you have a big orchestration or something like that. So you just press apply and okay. And so you can change the size of the notes that will be printed. So in order to change time signatures, it's very similar to what we've done before. You just go over to the palettes and you click down time signatures. And then let's say you wanted the first measure to be two, four. You would just click on two, four, drag and drop. And then you'll notice there's only two beats now in the first measure. Uh, and the other beats were put uh, in the second measure. So, and this is for the entire piece. Now let's say the second measure you wanted to have returned to four, four. You just drag and drop again. And again, you can do this throughout the entire piece. If you would like to create your own custom time signature, you just click on more, create time signature. And then you just input what you would like to uh, have, let's say 516, and then you say add. And then what that did is it added it to the palette over here. You just press on more and you can see there's my custom 516. And so you can have just about every uh, time signature that you need or custom time signatures for MuseScore. In order to add measures to your piece, you can go up to add and then measures and then append one measure will add it to the end of the piece. And uh, you can add one measure at a time or multiple measures. If you want to insert a measure, what you would do is have the measure selected that you want to have it inserted, go up to add and then measures. And then you would click on insert one measure and that will insert it one measure before. So you can see now there's another measure before the one that I selected. So that's how you can add measures. And again, to delete measures, remember it's control delete and that will uh, delete the entire measure from the score, the notes and the measure itself. If you would like to change the instruments in the score that you're creating, you would go up to edit and then instruments, you could also press I and it'll bring up the screen like we saw at the beginning and you can change instruments. Uh, if you want to delete one from the score, you would just click on here and then uh, glockenspiel and then remove from score and that would uh, delete it from the score. So that's very helpful. As I mentioned before, this video uh, barely touches the surface of what is possible in MuseScore. Uh, so you can check out my other videos on this channel uh, to see uh, more specifically what you're looking for with help on how to use MuseScore. So now that you know the basics, let's make sure you know how to export your music. So you just go up to file and then export and you can export the full score as a PDF or you can save it as an image 
or a WAV file because it is also saved as audio. So uh, you just export and then pick a place on your computer you'd like to put that file. The playback controls are on the top of the screen. You can go ahead and play your music at any time. Right now I've got one note in there, but let's say I click play. Um, you need to make sure that when you do that, you press on the back arrow and so that it will click play. And then that would play your score. And if you want to loop, you can do that as well. It has repeats. Sometimes you don't want the repeats to be followed, so you can also uh, play around with the different things on here. Uh, you can capture images of just parts of your music by just uh, having the image capture there and then just selecting it and then saving it where you would like to save. And lastly, you can add plugins to, your, to uh, MuseScore so that you can add functionality to the different things you are doing. So this tutorial was meant for beginners who are uh, starting out on MuseScore, and you now know how to use MuseScore to get started with music that you're creating. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments section below. I do my best to answer those. I have other MuseScore tutorials available. I'll put links to them around this video. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. I thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.